That made us all gasp this morning. Carve, why do you think he's leaving? I think it's just because he's tired. He is somebody who's been a manager almost non-stop for 23 years. I think he's only had something like three or four months off uh, when he left Borussia Dortmund. Uh, you know, his life is Liverpool Football Club. He said today, I don't really have a life apart from my job. And you have to remember the size of Liverpool. This is one of the biggest jobs in world football. They're a club who have supporters in virtually every country in the world. And also, these supporters are now connected to the club through social media. And they watch every single game. He is a manager who probably takes charge of his team, what, 60 times a year. Then they're pre-season friendlies as well. The amount of media work he has to do, the amount of scrutiny and analysis and the amount of noise there is on everything he does tires you out. And he just wants a break. He wants, he wants a life for a while. And I thought it was really striking today uh, in that interview. He said he might stop being a manager altogether. He said, look, I want to take some time out. And I kind of read it as maybe he's considering a career change. Maybe he's just thought, look, I've done football for so many years. Now I want to go and travel or I uh, want to you know, work for charities or I want to become a teacher. But then he kind of did say that, look, after taking a year, maybe I will be back as a manager, but obviously not for another, uh, another English club except a Liverpool. He couldn't do that. But I just thought that he is such a great communicator. How many people could communicate like he did today? It's very difficult to look at a camera without a script and be authentic and put into words exactly what you're feeling and tell your truth and have people connect with you. And I think that's what Jurgen Klopp has done. But just to put it into context, you know, nobody has died today. You know, I know this is big news for us because we're a sports news channel. So let's put things into perspective. In the grand scheme of things, this is not a big story. And I think Jurgen Klopp perhaps will be bemused uh, by the amount of coverage it's getting. And perhaps it's one of the reasons why he feels he's made the right decision, because he doesn't want to live with this scrutiny uh, the whole time. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people love him. A lot of people don't like him. We are going to miss him because he's an incredible character, an incredible manager and an incredible communicator as well. And that is so important in the age that we live in. Melissa, our chief reporter has just said this isn't a big story. This is a massive story, isn't it? It's significant because it changes so much in a, in a very short period of time. I think Jurgen Klopp's just become synonymous with Liverpool and it's hard to imagine Anfield post Klopp. Just like I was sitting here and I'm you know, watching some of the VTs we've been running, some exceptional moments, and the toxicity and misery that surrounded the club before he came in feels like an altogether different lifetime because of just how much he's enlivened the place, just in every sort of element. And I know this decision will have been so hard for him to arrive at because he really has poured everything that he's got into the club. And I remember on his three-year anniversary, I sat down with him to talk through all the situations that have happened and Liverpool losing finals. And he said to me, everything I have, everything that's in my heart and soul and my mind, my body, I have poured it in, I, I've held nothing back. And I know, I don't know when we will win something, but I am sure because of everything I've given that this club will win something. And we all know what's transpired since. But I think about the first pre-season that Jurgen Klopp did as Liverpool manager. And we sat down with him and he said, listen, I don't want to be old in football. I'm not one of those managers that's going to go until I'm, you know, 60s, 70s. I want to enjoy my life away from the game. I want to appreciate time with my family. I want to have different experiences. I, I want to be able to relax, to switch off. And when we look throughout his career, while he is so invested in the club, he is a guy that, you know, when he's on holiday, you see him in Ibiza with his like cute little hat and he's having the time of his life. He knows how to have balance. And I think now he's, he's gotten to the point where 
the other sections of his life need to take precedence. And no one at Liverpool will begrudge him that because he has earned the right to leave on his terms, on his time, and with his heart and mind aligned on this decision. Because like I said, I know it'll be difficult for him and he would have thought a lot about it. And I think the big thing is even when he's decided to exit, he's doing it knowing that the club are in a healthy position, that the squad are in a good place. Even at the final stretch, he's thinking about what's best for Liverpool. All right, well, let's expand on that. As Liverpool prepare to face life without Klopp, what does the future hold for Klopp himself? As Carve just intimated, he stopped short of saying he's retiring from management, but he insists he will not manage the club next season and will never manage another club in England. Whatever will happen in the future, I don't know now. I don't know now. But no club, no country for the next year, no other English club ever, I can promise that, even if I have nothing to eat, that will not happen. So, um, and that will not happen as well, by the way. So, um, <laughs> thanks to Liverpool. Um, and, um, and so that's all, that's all okay. But it's too important to do it with 50%. It is just too important. And that's why, and this team is set up for the future. When I said Liverpool 2.0, that didn't include me, obviously, for the next 10 years. So, but the team is there, the basis is there. And whoever comes in cannot give anybody a guarantee to win trophies, but can give as a good chance to play really good football. And that's fine, because we will get a top manager here. And then there will be good football and what we all learned and improved and did in the last few years and this changing from doubters to believers and staying believing in difficult moments, if we keep all that, then it is a wonderful future ahead. Carve, Sir Alex famously retired and then changed his mind. Can you see Jurgen Klopp doing the same? Not at all. He was actually asked that question in the press conference today and he was totally taken aback. He was like, what? Sir Alex Ferguson changed his mind. And uh, one of the journalists had to explain to him what actually happened with Sir Alex Ferguson uh, changing his mind. But he said that is not going to happen. I think at the moment where his head's at is that he wants to retire. He kind of said, if you ask me today whether I'm going to be a manager again, the answer would be no. He just wants to take a break. I think the problem he's got is that when he takes this break, um, you know, a lot of the big clubs in the world, when they're going to be looking for a manager, they will be calling him. Exactly. They probably won't be calling him directly, but they'll be calling his agent. And his agent will probably be calling him wherever he is and saying, Jürgen, this club have been in touch. What do you think? And I think the issue is how many jobs are out there that Jürgen Klopp would be tempted to do? He's ruled out anything uh, in England. So you're looking at Europe. We know his values. I don't think he's going to be tempted by working in Saudi Arabia, uh, for instance. Uh, and the project has to be right for him. You know, I don't think you could see him going to Real Madrid, for instance, or uh, PSG. It's got to be something that he feels really connected to. So I don't know. I don't think there's that many clubs out there that would tempt him uh, to change his mind in the future. But let's just give him some time. Let's give him some space. Let's give him and his family, uh, you know, that breathing room to live their life and decide for themselves what they want to do next. Because he doesn't owe the football world anything. What do you think, Melissa? Do you think this is a retirement or do you think it's a sabbatical? I think as it stands, it's a sabbatical because all he knows is he doesn't have the energy at present and leading into the summer to continue. He was talking about, there were conversations happening about pre-season tour and about transfers. And in that moment, it dawned on him like, oof, that's, that's a lot to still be processing and, and being involved in and I don't have it in me. But that's right now. The last time Jurgen Klopp planned to take a sabbatical for a year, after three months, Liverpool were on the line and they convinced him otherwise. I think this time, the break will be significant. I, I do think he's hard set on having a year or almost a year just away from football management. 
the one job that I think would tempt him long term is the German national team. I think that's always been in the thought process, both from Germany and from Klopp himself. So perhaps that in future, but I think everything that he's told us has come from the heart. There's no, there's nothing he's hiding or lying about or anything like that. He's told us today how he feels, how he feels about the end of the season, how he feels about the next few months of his life. And he's been honest in saying, he doesn't know whether what he's feeling will change. He's never had the experience of being away from football management for a long time. He doesn't know if he'll miss it, if he'll need it in his life. So we'll wait and see. We will indeed. All right, I want to bring in our reporter, Vinny O'Connor, who's at Anfield for us. Vinny, hello again. Now, you've lived in the city, covered Liverpool for a number of years. What stands out for you in terms of your dealings with Klopp? Yeah, well, I'll go back to 2015 when he came into the club. And as Melissa said, it was a very different place back then. It felt like it needed a shake-up. And at that first news conference that he gave and he described himself as the normal one, it felt like this was a change for the better. I don't mean that with any disrespect to Brendan Rodgers, who was great to deal with as well. But, of course, after he went close to the title, he wasn't able to to build on that and I think part of that was due to the structure of the club it needed a bit of a shake-up and Jurgen Klopp coming in as manager was a big factor in that Liverpool needed to give him the structure that would enable him to deliver success you couldn't predict at that point when he took over in 2015 it was going to deliver the success that he did but what you saw was someone who was very driven, very ambitious and someone who cared. And I think that's been an underlying theme throughout his time here. He's made players under his tutelage better. I mean, even bringing in someone like Mo Salah possibly wasn't the most outstanding of signings you'd have thought at the time. Certainly not one that the fans would have necessarily uh, have gone for massively, albeit he was in good form at Roma. However, he came here and he's more than delivered and delivered more than, I think, beyond anyone's kind of expectations under, under someone like Jurgen Klopp. And as I say, he cares. That's been an underlying theme. He cares about his players. He cares about the fans. He cares about the, the Hillsborough families. He cares about this city. And... He's just been a figurehead for this football club and that has been a big factor in him delivering the success. And to a certain extent, I think he enjoys his time with us a little bit as well. He's been a pleasure to deal with throughout it. Um, I've been fortunate, I think, in many ways as well. In this job, we've seen Liverpool managers come and go and I think he's alluded to some of the pressures of the role as well again today and I've seen it change previous Liverpool managers as well. In his dealings with me... I'm not really seeing a difference in Jurgen Klopp, albeit he did allude to the pressures of, of, of the position. And in terms of what he's been like day to day, the way he is when it comes to interviews, the way he handles the media, there's always going to be the odd moment when he takes umbrage at something or, or snaps at something. I think that's only human nature, but he's also someone who will apologise if he, if he feels he got it wrong. And you can have that kind of discussion as well with him. And it's certainly not someone who generally holds, holds a grudge against you if you do manage to upset him on the rare occasion that you do manage to upset him. I kind of... Well, I don't think I did really upset him, but there was one moment, of course, going back a, a few weeks at the training ground. He is the only manager who's ever put me in a headlock. It was funny, actually, because when we were at the training ground, I mentioned to my cameraman, because it was after an international break, uh, I'll say, I said to him, Jürgen will often come over and maybe have a little bit of a chat while uh, the lads are going through the warm-up ahead of training. This time he came over, and it was ahead of a 12.30 kickoff, so it was a bit of a joke, and he did play to the camera a little bit as he did shout over to my cameraman at the time, are you from Sky, and then decided to get me in a headlock and throw in the odd little dig as well. But he's also also the only manager who's walked through a mix zone after a European Cup final, a successful European Cup final, uh, and given me a hug as well. And on that day, you can genuinely say we were absolutely made up for him. I'd seen him go through the criticism of missing out on major trophies, the times that he'd been beaten in a final, the questions being raised, would he ever deliver the success? And to see those scenes uh, when Liverpool lifted the European Cup and, uh, and again, just reaffirming the success that he's brought to, the, to this football club, it was a, 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 a pleasure really to share that kind of moment with, with the Liverpool manager and, and you can see how much it meant to him as he walked through that mix zone and uh, in terms of, of hugs that you can get they're, they're not, there's an, <laughs> it's very difficult to describe the kind of bear hug the tightness of it is uh, but he has been a breath of fresh air at this place, a pleasure to deal with 
I'm really looking forward to what's going to come over the next few months with Liverpool as well and what success potentially Jurgen Klopp can deliver in his final months as the Liverpool manager. Uh, but as, as well, it's also tinged with that disappointment that we won't be dealing with him as the Liverpool manager in the future. But it's nothing compared to the disappointment that the Liverpool fans will be feeling this evening, knowing that he'll be leaving at the end of the season. Indeed. We had a whip round in the newsroom to get him to do that headlock, Vinny. It cost us £3.47. Thank you very much. <laughs>